with Michael Abels. Michael, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. How are you, Kaya? Oh, great. So um, we're here at the ASCAP Awards, and uh, you're kind of a part of the show tonight. Let's talk about that. Yes, I am part of the show. Uh, we're doing the first ever live premiere of the full song Siki Liza Kwa Wahenga, the main title from Get Out. So talk about the inspiration of that. That's such an iconic opening, and I remember sitting in the theater and kind of it rolls over the, the main titles, the credits rolling over that. Um, what did you and Jordan come up with? How did you guys come up with that idea? Or did you come up with that idea? And what was kind of the significance of using those vocals? Well, it started, uh, Jordan and I had lunch before the film was even shot. And he said very clearly that he wanted in this film the African-American voice, both literally and metaphorically. And so, uh, and, but we talked about, and we had a long conversation about what constitutes scary music, you know, and what, what are we afraid of? And um, about the vocals, we, we identified that you know, a lot of African American music kind of is hopeful, even in its, even in the blues, there's sort of a hope. And he said, "We can't have any hope. You got to drain the hope right out of it." So I said, "I think what you you mean is kind of like gospel horror." <laughs> so we both liked the idea of those words together, and we didn't know what that sounded like. But I went home, and I said, "Okay, what is gospel horror?" And because the the voices are supposed to be ghosts warning the main character, I didn't. Be, they couldn't be speaking in English because it would be too obvious. It had to be, it had to be like a shadow and a metaphor. So, I decided on Swahili because it's musical and uh, and it's an African language. So, um, the voices are saying, "Brother uh, Siki Liza Kwawahenga," which means "Listen to the ancestors and run." <laughs> uh, so, and tonight we'll hear three full verses of this song, all in Swahili, um, sung by a choir assembled specifically for tonight. So what, was, uh, what kind of went into making it a performance versus recording it for the film? Was there any difference? Did you have to beef up the number of uh, people in the choir, or like how does it kind of how do you adapt it for live for live performance? Yeah, it's. I mean, if I if I had only known that I would have to do it live, it might have turned out very differently, because you could do a lot of things in the studio when you think, oh, you know, it's just it's the studio. Uh, every single in the studio, every single word of that recording was recorded separately. Yes. Yeah. And there were no back. I hadn't even written the background tracks, and then suddenly you have to do it live, and it, it's much different. So, in the studio, we only used eight singers. Tonight, you'll hear 27 or 28, um, because in one place there's actually 10 parts going on at different places, and um, and then the instruments. I had to figure out how to create those live and have people to play them. And I added a djembe player because uh, in a in a full song version. You really, it needs to go somewhere. You know, a song needs to have a, a, a different sort of um, life than a, than a main title, really. So it, this is kind of the hybrid, um, better than recorded live version. 